two people here. We're gonna use our one. We are super tanky. Not super tanky, but we're pretty healthy, pretty damagey, so we're gonna try to hang out in this fight as much as possible. We use our one. We have three people on us. Izanami dashes in. Super bad mistake by her. We're gonna go ahead and hit her with our 1 3 combo, and that was enough to make her run. We use our ultimate, and we're able to get the pick. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a new request to play Changa in solo lane. If you are new to the channel, I upload six to seven times a week. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If you are a returning viewer, I think this is my third Chonga video. We've played her mid, we've played her support, and now we're playing her solo. Somebody asked that I do a Chonga no back challenge, which I like half-heartedly attempt this game, but I end up backing. So let's go ahead and just review Chonga's abilities. Chonga's one is her Crescent Moon. It's going to be a cone attack that deals damage. I love it. So simple. It has a super short cooldown. You're going to want to max this ability out first, put a point into it first, and use this ability whenever you can. Chonga's two is her Moonlit Waltz. She's going to dance and become damage and crowd control immune. Any damage that she does take or any tick damage that she does take and that was avoided, she's going to restore some mana. Chonga's 3 is a circle attack around herself. It's going to heal her and allies. It's going to apply a 50% healing reduction onto the enemies, which is a huge deal. 50% anti-healing is more than any item. The lifetime of the anti-heal is going to be 4 seconds. Chonga's ultimate, she's going to shoot a line attack forward, it's going to stun anyone that it connects. If it stuns one god, the second god that it stuns is going to be stunned for one second longer than the first god. Chonga's passive, Chonga can purchase and sell items from anywhere on the map thanks to her rabbit companion. When the rabbit reaches the store, it's going to return and the transaction completes. Only one item can be purchased at a time, so like if you want one potion, the rabbit's got to run all the way back to the spawn, grab the potion for you, bring it back for you, and then you can send her again. Chonga also receives 25% movement speed with no backpedal penalty while using her dances. So we lost a little bit of this early game pressure. Amaterasu just kind of outclears me with that one ability. I needed both my abilities in order to be able to outclear her. She was able to get the first totem of kill. We should be able to contest all of the other totem of coups. So we're gonna hit her with our three. Does some damage, reduces her healing. We're gonna hit her with her one. Pop a health potion. So we've got the advantage right here. Let's see if we can do anything with it. We're gonna poke her, hit her with a three. So we definitely wanna be using our abilities on the wave, but if we can hit her and part of the wave, or the whole wave, we definitely wanna do that. Our one has a six second cooldown. So we should be able to spam that pretty often. In terms of the leveling order, you're gonna wanna put a point into your one, a point into your three, point into your two. At level four, put a point into your one, Five, point your slain. ult, max out your one, max out your ult, max out your three, and max out your two. In terms of the build, we're going to be going into Warrior's Blessing, and then we bought the tier one of the Celestial Legion Helm, which we will get to whenever we buy that item. Right now, we're completely out of mana. We're waiting for our jungler, just trying to let him know that we are out of mana. Since we are out of mana, and we don't really think we can take that blue by ourselves, we're going to go for the Totem of Coup. The Totem of Coup is going to give everyone on your team some gold, and it's also going to give them some MP5, so they're going to recover some mana. So our one. Completely out of mana, so we're going to fall back a little bit. Still spamming that I need the jungle buff, hoping that my jungler will come over and help me out.
Looks like he's on his way. We're gonna tag one more wave with our ability and then probably make a play for a blue buff. Sugiyomi is on blue. We're gonna go ahead and clear the wave or tag it at least. And if we stand in between lane and in between blue right here, we should be able to get the XP in the minion time. We mistimed that a little bit. We didn't get any of the XP from the archers. But we did get our blue buff, and that is a pretty big win. We're going to go ahead and clear the wave, and then shift our attention to the totem of two. Amaterasu just used her teleport cliff to get to lane. So if we can send her back, we will have a huge advantage in this lane for a little bit. Gonna go ahead and just clean up the totem of Ku. So right here, I could back and go for shoes, recover all of my mana, but I'm still like thinking about the no backing challenge as Shaga. So we hang out in lane a little bit longer than we probably need to. We're gonna go ahead and buy some lifesteal boots. Our rabbit takes off. If you look at the mini map, and the rabbit is now at the tier 2 tower, about to be at the phoenix line. It's going to run to the fountain, grab the boots for us, and then return to us with the boots. We have a bit of mana built up. We're going to go ahead and use our abilities on the lane. That is a Amaterasu ult. We're just going to use our 2 to immune the final hit so we don't get stunned. We use our 1. We do have our ultimate, but I don't think we have any kill potential right now, so we're just going to hold on to it. Maybe Tsukiyomi will make a rotation. So with Chanda in solo, really just try to land your one on them and not clear them. We're chunking. If she gets too close, we're going to use our three, heal ourselves up, apply anti-heal to her. Use our one. Use our three. Use our one. We miss our one right there. If we were to have hit our one right there, I think we would have been able to get here with an ult one to follow. So right now we're kind of hurting for mana. Our blue is down. Or our camp needs to be taken down. We're going to go ahead and use our three. So each time we're using our 1, 2, and 3, we're getting a 25% movement increase, and we're not suffering from a backpedal penalty. So a backpedal penalty. In Smite, you move faster when you travel forward than when you travel backwards. And you travel backwards, there's a little bit of a movement speed penalty. Oh man, takes a while when you just have to basic attack it to death. But we got our blue. Looks like we missed a melee minion or two there. We are gonna go ahead and get the tier 2 version of the Celestial Legion Helm. And the Celestial Legion Helm no is going to give us 60 magical power, it's going to give us 40 physical protections, and 20 MP5. All very valuable stats for being a magical solo laner going against a physical solo laner. Magical power is going to help us with the lane clear, the physical protections are going to help us against Amaterasu, and the 20 MP5 are going to help us recover mana whenever we don't have our camp. So we get ulted, we're very weak, we gotta wiggle around a little bit, Amaterasu overcommitted, and we get a kill onto her, just for surviving and existing. The Celestial Legion Helm, every 2 seconds you receive a stack of 7 physical protections, up to a max of 5 stacks. Stacks are removed upon taking physical damage from gods, stacks can only be gained after not taking physical damage from gods for 2 seconds. So this item provides 40 physical protections, plus it can also provide an additional 35 physical protections from its passive, bringing this item's physical protections to 75, which is pretty high considering it's also giving us 60 magical power and some MP5. We go ahead and back, 
we kind of gave up on the no back challenge. We were too low on health, too low on mana. So we are just gonna clean up this wave. Try to poke out this Amaterasu. We are fighting her into minions, and I still feel like we got the better end of that. We're gonna use our two to avoid her stun. We swing and miss on that ult pretty hard. If we would have hit it, I think we would have had kill potential. That's a huge shame. But Amaterasu is very weak, so now we're just gonna clear wave and kind of wait to see if she steps up. We're kind of zoning her, kind of keeping her from getting any XP, but that's really boring, so we're just gonna clear the wave and rotate to our blue. They're both gonna need a hospital. All right, our jungler did not help us out with as many blues as we would like, but that's all right. Double kill. We're able to get them by ourselves. Looks like the Amaterasu back, so we're just gonna go ahead and clear the wave. We're gonna make a play for the totem of two. This will give us gold and give everybody on our team some MP5. It's imagine like popping a mana potion that affects your entire team. So everybody recovers from a mana potion. That's kind of what Totem of Ku is doing. Amaterasu is weak. She used the basic. I missed my one. We're gonna use our three on her. She's so weak, we almost have kill potential. We do have our ultimate, so if we can ult her, three her, and one her, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get her at this point in the game. Thor comes in. We're gonna use our two. We used it a little bit early. We go ahead and cast our ultimate. We get the armor while she's ulting, so she can't finish it. Tsukiyomi is able to clean up both kills. We did hit both of them with our ultimate. Getting the stun onto Thor and then getting a lot of damage onto Amaterasu. Tsukiyomi was able to get the final hit there. So the next item we are going to be building into is Warlock Staff. Warlock Staff costs 2,650 gold. Very close to that price range. We don't want to send our rabbit back, reach the price range, and then have to wait for our rabbit to get back, and then send them back again to start stacking. So we're kind of just holding off until we have the full amount. You've only just the Warlock Staff unstacked is going to give us 85 magical power, 150 health, 200 mana, and 10% magical penetration. Fully stacked, it is going to give us 145 magical power, 225 health, 200 mana, and 10% magical penetration. So we want this item for the health, the power, and the percent penetration. Amaterasu was able to secure her own blue. She just has a little bit better secure than I do. With Warlock Staff, getting that extra bit of health and that power as well. It's a, it's a hybrid item. So we're getting 145 power, fully stacked, which is a lot. Which is a lot, especially compared to most items. The Hurt Train's here. We get our ultimate off onto the Amaterasu. Great rotation from the team. Put Warlock Staff, power, and health. So we're gonna be a little bit tankier. We're gonna have some power. Just a really good item for trying to be a little tanky while also still dealing relevant damage. We're gonna go ahead and rotate to our blue buff. So Becca's here. Looks like our team's getting collapsed on. We're gonna use our we get knocked back by the Sobek, we're going to use our 1, use our 3. I don't think there's much we're going to be able to do in this fight, so we're just going to start falling back. Sobek is engaging into two people, with two people coming behind him. It is now a 4v1. Tsukiyomi is going, realizes that's a very bad fight, and starts to retreat. So we have enough money for the Warlock Staff. We're going to go ahead and pick that bad boy up, and then use our Teleport Cliff to get back to the lane. Oh, 
Looks like we're gonna have a Sobek over there waiting for us. He dashes out. I'm gonna go ahead and just clean up the wave, get the gold and XP. Thor is out of position, so we're gonna try to catch him. Oh. I can fight. We got him absolute. He uses his hammer. Right now we're using our abilities to get that 25% increased movement speed. We use our ultimate and we're able to get the pick onto Thor. If we didn't use our ultimate right there, I don't think we would have been able to get him. He would have just used his hammer as soon as it came off the cooldown. No sight of Amaterasu, so we're just going to push up a wave, clear this next wave, and then go into their jungle and start stripping away some camps. Check their blue, it is here, so we're going to go ahead and work on this. There's Amaterasu. Our wave is going to meet one of her waves right in front of that tower, so we do not have to go far. We're just going to go ahead and clean up An this enemy camp, has been slain. rotate back to solo. Right here we do have the option of going to mid, but I see the Nua and Sobek just hiding under their tier 2 tower. I don't think there's much point in me rotating if they're just going to be turtling under tower. We're going to see if we can get any poke onto this Amaterasu. We miss our one. Hit her with a three. Now she has 50% reduced healing. Hit her with a one. So she's just so fast. I think she can just run away. I don't. If she wants to not engage me, I don't think there's a whole lot I'm gonna be able to do. So while she's in our jungle, we're just gonna go ahead and clear the wave. Make our way back to her blue. See if she is working on that. Nope, she's back at her blue line. I'll attack right. We drop our blue. Struggle to pick it up, but we managed to get it. Still working on our warlock staff stacks. We have 2,000 gold in pocket. We should probably send our rabbit back to buy an item. So going Warlock Staff after Boots, it's going to take us a little bit to stack it. And that means that we're going to want to stay in our lane a little bit longer than we normally do with other characters. We will get stacks if we get kills. However, we want to get our health online, become more tanky, and then start looking for the fights. New Wells out of position. We're going to use our one. Use our three. She uses her sanctuary and her Aegis for me. We're gonna cast our one, get the double stun, and we're able to get the pick onto the new one right there. Group of four, we're gonna start healing our team. We see Amaterasu is at our tier one tower on the left. We don't want to give her that for free, so we're gonna teleport back. I say, team, attack gold. I will handle left. And as soon as I teleport over here, Amaterasu just starts running, and she's so much faster than me because of her one that there's not a whole lot I can do. We got all of those harpies. We're kind of just chasing her. She's kind of just chasing us. It's going to take me a while to kill her. It's not like I can catch her and just burst her down. It's going to be a... A while. I gotta hit her with my abilities a couple times, and with her movement speed, if she wants to run away, she can just get away. There's not a whole lot I'm gonna be able to do. So what I want to focus on is not wasting time trying to chase the Samaterasu. Right there, I consider there's no point in really trying to damage her, so we're just gonna walk around, see if she does anything. We're making a rotation of Poseidon, we're going to see if we can help him. We use R2 to avoid the Amaterasu stun. We were able to get the pick onto Thor right there. Still working on getting Poseidon out. We're going to use our 1 to be useful. New Wells Ultimate is able to clean up with Poseidon. 
Now it is a 4v1. We're gonna see if there's anything we can do. We use our 1, we use our 3. Almaterasi's on us, Sukiyama's going back in, so we're gonna go back in and try to help. We get the pick onto the Izanami. We are able to take a 0-2 fight and make it a 2-2 fight. Sobek's still by. Right, yeah, we were able to make it a two and three fight. So we got three kills there. They only got two. Ooh, we actually got four kills. It's just the Amaterasu left. Hachimon is working on the right Phoenix. Thor just spawned, so that's probably not going to go that well for him. We have so much money in hand. We should have sent our rabbit back a while ago. We're also probably just going to back after this Pyromancer. So the Pyromancer is going to give everybody on your team some gold. And if you look below our Titan on the minimap, there's a yellow circle on the Sobek. That represents the amount of time that we have the Pyromancer buff for. The Pyromancer buff is going to give us increased movement speed when leaving the fountain for a few seconds. So you zoom back to the lane after getting the Pyromancer. We're going to go ahead and clear this wave. Oh, so we were so close to being 20 by 20. Reaching level 20 before the 20 minute mark. We needed two more melee minions and that final decision that I made of going for the blue camp before going for the wave makes it to where I don't hit 20 by 20. If I would have gotten the full wave, the three melee tower. minions and the three archers and then hit the blue camp, I'd be level 20. But since I did it in the opposite order, the melee minions died before I could get within distance to get their gold and XP. So after going into Warlock Staff, we're going to be going into Genji's Guard. Genji's Guard is going to give us some magical protections, and whenever we are damaged by a magical ability, we're going to take 2 seconds off of all of our cooldowns. This item also gives us 10% cooldown reduction. After Genji's Guard, we're going to be going into Obsidian Shard. Obsidian Shard is going to be our percentage penetration. We have 10% from the Warlock Staff, and now we're going to have 20% from Obsidian Shard. The max is 40%. Our allies are in we teleport trouble. all the way over to the right lane. These are a little out of position. We're going to use our 1, we're use our 3. We're kind of waiting. We don't know where she went. We probably should have just kept running in a straight line. We thought maybe she'd do something fancy and try to run behind us. Using our abilities for the movement speed, we use our ultimate, and it's short. Super An unfortunate right there. <laughs> Amaterasu is pushing mid. They were warned. Poseidon is able to clean up the Izanami. We have Sukiyomi and Sobek in right. Poseidon is back because he's out of mana. So we'll leave mid to Poseidon. And then we'll start working on the right lane. We kind of needed Sukiyomi here for this to work. I don't think that Sobek and myself are going to be able to take this. We use our 1, we get some damage onto the Thor. We try to heal the Sobek and damage the enemy, but Sobek dashes out of it. We use our 1, we get some damage off. Nuwok uses her ultimate. Naomi hits one of his ults onto the Thor. We're going to fall back, throw a heal onto the Thor, or onto the Tsukiyomi. Two people here, we're going to use our 1. We are super tanky, not super tanky, but we're pretty healthy, pretty damagey, so we're going to try to hang out in this fight as much as possible. We use our one, we have three people on us. Izanami dashes in, super bad mistake by her. We're going to go ahead and hit her with our 1-3 combo, and that was enough to make her run. We use our ultimate and we're able to get the pick. We're still up here in the right lane. We have our Hunter and Poseidon, so if we can tank this just a little bit, I feel like our two damage sources should be able to get the Phoenix right here. We use our three onto the Nuwa, reduce her healing by 50%. We're gonna work on the Phoenix. Poseidon is able to clean up the Nuwa. We use our three to heal the Hachimon, and I think that was just enough to get him out. Poseidon's a little far up. Three people, we got our Phoenix. I think it's time to extract. Old Fury is up. Tactical Fury. 
we're running back. We should be able to get okay. this gold for free. It's gonna go down for us. If we were to back, we wouldn't know what to do. So we're just gonna hang out in lane. We pretty much have full health, pretty much have full mana. We don't really have enough for a full item. So in order to sell our starter item, we have to send the rabbit back to Fountain, just to sell it, and then come back. Then we would have to buy another item, and the rabbit would have to do the same rotation. We use our ultimate, we're able to get the stun, basic, one, and we're able to get the kick onto the Izanami. Pretty good pick. That was one of their three damage sources. They have two people in left. We're gonna go ahead and teleport over there. As soon as I get here, Amaterasu starts running away. Sobek is kind of trying to tussle. Looks like he's gonna start running away. So we're gonna make our way to the team fight. We have two people coming in behind. Thor goes up into the air. We've got the full five over here, so whatever fight is over here is probably going to be pretty favorable for us. Thor's in right. Sobek's here. We're going to use our one, use our three, get a healing reduction off. We're going to just tank for the team. They should be able to get the tower. Your team has destroyed the left enemy. Throw out the heal for the team. And we have five people here, so we should be able to get this. Even though we don't have minions, so if you have minions in the Phoenix or Power line, you're going to deal real damage to the Phoenix and Power, which is essentially double if they do not have minions in the Tower line. So right here, this is... We potentially have end potential because we have a fat wave coming in right, but we just get melted. And I think, I'm pretty sure that that Sobek fucked me, and I got on the Thor wall, like I didn't come down probably. Pretty sure I was gonna die either way right there, but just saying, I do have a, an ability that allows me to immune stuff. If I could have landed and used it, it might have been helpful. So right there, we should have backed off as soon as we got the Phoenix. There was still a tower in mid, so I think part of my team started attacking the middle Phoenix, not realizing the tower was there. Allies are in After going into Obsidian Shard, we're going to be going into the Mantle Discord. I feel like they just have some decent setup, and if we fall below a certain health threshold, being able to stun is really helpful. Oh my, we might lose here. So we have some minions pushing up on the right side and the left side. Sobek just spawns. We have to hold them. He has to hold them for five seconds. We got to hold them. If we can successfully defend here, we might win to win in. We use our 1 and our 2 combo. We really want to be focusing Izanami and Nuwa right here. Sobek is able to get a double. An enemy has been slain. Izanami probably could have gotten some serious damage onto that Titan right there. Nuwa tries to... I don't know what she was doing right there, but we get a Dia side. We have minions pushing in through the left. We have a wave about to take that right Phoenix. So we're trying to run up there as quick as possible. You know, wall clearing camps or clearing minions. It looks like Winions have got it for us, but we still need another 15 or 16 seconds. The wave on left is now caught up on enemy minions. The wave in right is caught up on the Phoenix, so we have nothing pushing into the Titan right now. They're about to respawn. The Titan is very, very weak. It's only going to take an ability from one of us to finish it. We're gonna let the fat wave push in. You see Sobek, we see three people, so we're gonna immediately turn and pick a different plan. We're gonna switch our attention to the Thor. Poseidon weaves his way in, casts his ability, and we get the pick. Well, that's gonna be the end of this one. If you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more content like this, please check out the channel and subscribe for more. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.